Hello, welcome to our uh, pastor's Bible study. Uh, thanks for joining us. We are, uh, this will be the last time for the next few weeks that we are in the catechism. We uh, are going to finish up the, the second article of the creed, talking about Jesus. And then starting next week, we are uh, we're going to be having a conversation about the forgiving challenge. We, uh, we launched that last night and uh, we're blown away with how many people were there. Uh, it was a great, yeah, it was a great Wednesday oh, night. Yeah. yeah. Um, if if you missed it, if you missed the first one, uh, don't worry. You can still you can jump into the second Wednesday. You know, come come anytime. We know maybe there was it just didn't work out for you yesterday. But yeah, yeah, yeah. God, God was like, oh, your expectations are here. I'm gonna <laughs> show you just how I'm working and just far exceed your expectations. Yeah. So it was, it was a, a great start to this uh, forgiving challenge, um, but. That's not what we're here to talk about today. We're still here to talk about Jesus. Not that we're going to stop talking about him. <laughs> yeah, later. I, yeah, I don't know how you can leave Jesus out of the forgiving theme. Exactly. But, yeah. <laughs> but but today, yeah, we're we're going to the creed again. Yeah, yeah, and this will be the 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 third part of the second article. Keep those straight. Not confusing at all. Yeah, <laughs> um, and this is uh, kind of closing out uh, this the article focusing on. God the Son, Jesus. Um, and, you know, when I look here, uh, if you have this catechism, we're starting on page 188. Um, if you don't have this catechism, we're in the second article. Um, but the central thought here at the bottom, I just think, does fit well with the forgiving challenge. It says, with this uh, talks, it goes more in depth on the second article and says, as Christians, we confess that our salvation and our happiness rests on Jesus, our Lord. He set us free to live under his care and serve him and others. Now, why might this tie into the forgiving challenge? The latest edition of Guess What Pastor is Thinking. <laughs> how does, how does this, well, I mean, I'm, I'm going to pick out the, the word free, mm. Because that is going to be a, a ongoing theme. Um, we are forgiven, you know, to be freed from our sil- uh, from our sin, our guilt, our shame. Um, and I, I think one of the ways that I was always taught is, you know, we're freed from those things and we're freed for other things. Mm-hmm. Uh, part of which is to, you know, we're freed for them to forgive one another, but we're also freed uh, for, you know, living, you know, under Christ in his kingdom, serving him. Um, yeah, it just kind of unlocks all of our life mm-hmm. once we know Jesus as our Lord and Savior, once we know he's taken our sins away. You are correct. <laughs> <laughs> ding, 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 ding. Um, yeah, and I don't know about you, but I always feel, not that I thought that this forgiving challenge was kind of like going off in its own route, but I always feel more validated and just like confident in something when you know, we're talking about the forgiving challenge, but here it's tying back into, you know, what our identity is in Jesus. You know, it's not just, this, God's story does not just have like one, it's, it's not like a, a show where you follow these main characters and these main characters and these main characters, but all these things are connected. Mm-hmm. You know, to be forgiven is to be freed from our sins and to be freed to serve God and to serve others, you know, like all these things connect. Mm -hmm. And so that just, uh, that just is is affirming for me when, you know, going through different, uh, different topics in the Bible to know that they're not just all kind of Mm one-offs, but that they all tie into the story of, of God's redemptive work in Mm -hmm. creation. Yeah. Yeah. You could, yeah, you could say, you know, and people have said this before, Man, the Bible sure is repetitive. Um, and I, I think you know, he would say, well, yes, it is. But, um, I mean, there, are, there is a variety in the way that like, the story is told, a variety in expressions of God's grace to us. But um, I, I always appreciate the, the one-liner that the Bible Project uses to describe uh, what the Bible is. The you know, Bible Project is the resources that we use for the Read Scripture Challenge. It says the Bible is a unified story that leads to Jesus. Mm. And I mean, like you could say the end point is Jesus, but it's like also Jesus all along the way. Too. Yeah. Kind of kind of like you're saying, yeah, it's just you you are confronted, <laughs> you know, impacted by God's grace and his love all the way through. <clears throat> yeah. 
Yeah, so um, this, this question, question 176, talking more about freedom, the question is, for what purpose has Christ freed me from sin, death, and the devil? You know, I, I, I briefly mentioned it in my overview, kind of kicking off the, the forgiving challenge in my sermon, that is, um, going through the acronym for SCARS, but mm-hmm. as, you know, we are going to find out, um, or no, we found out starting yesterday um, that... You know the scars. The, starting with S, everything starts with sin, mm-hmm. and so here, sin, death, and devil. They are, they're kind of like, I don't know, brother and sister. Like they're they're very closely related. Um, you know, those are the big three, the enemies that we we and Jesus fight against: mm-hmm. sin, death, and the devil. So, yeah. what is the purpose that Christ has freed us? From those things, yeah. I mean, it, the answer here is he did all this to to be my Lord. We've talked. About, I mean, we talked about that in a in a previous episode, so to speak. What does it mean for Jesus to be our Lord? You know, what, is, what does it mean for us to be like children of God? Um, I think I, I like how the phrasing is here. It says it explains like what what basically what does it mean to for Jesus to be my Lord, I might. It means that I might live with Him and for Him in peace and joy now and forever. Um, you know, so now and forever. Right? Sometimes I think, you know, we we ground our our hope about these things so much, like in the future, that we forget about the now. You know, it's kind of like mm-hmm. the like the forever starts now <laughs> for the Christian. You know, it's like once you're. Um, in a relationship with God, and there is a sense in which, like, eternal life, like we have it, we're already living it now. It's, it, it's going to be different, you know, after after this world, you know, after after this uh, present life. But it's not like living for Jesus, you know, freed and forgiven, um, has to be put on hold until some some other time frame. Um, so I, I think, for me, you know, when I when I hear this, I do, you know, yeah, I, I, I love those words, you know, living in peace and joy, knowing that sin, death, and the devil don't really have any power over me ultimately anymore. But I, I guess I just always run through, like, every single part of my life and think, um, like, there, there's, I guess I'll say it this way, there's not a part of my life that goes, like, unaffected or untouched by Jesus and and so I, I guess I have to constantly remind myself about that and and take stock of like well how can I truly live like Jesus is my Lord how can I truly live set free from these things in this area and this area and this area and it's kind of overwhelming sometimes but it's uh, it also is a joyful new life of freedom yeah I think you know picking up kind of what you said about like he, he touches every area of your life you know if we and this is something that you know it's easy to not do this it's it's much more comfortable to not think about it this way but as Christians we're called to to think okay if Jesus is Lord how does how does it affect everything like how does it affect what I watch on TV how does it affect how much I use my phone mm-hmm. how much does it affect you know what I'm putting into my body. You know, like, if if we really think about everything kind of going back to our identity in Christ, you know, well, if I see my body as, uh, you know, something that is a gift from God and is a temple of the Holy Spirit, like, I'm going to, I'm maybe going to not eat those uh, bacon cheeseburgers every every night, you know, like that's yeah, probably not every night. Yeah, it's a little <laughs> bit absurd. Um, <laughs> no, that's kind of what I did in college. <laughs> to be honest, I don't think God holds <laughs> college life against us. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> there's a lot of things that we look back. There, like, there, there is do? there is a verse. I, I can't remember I, what psalm it is, but there's a line where the psalmist writes, "Like, forgive me for the sins of my youth." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think that, that applies there. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, but like you know, how much I spend on my phone, you know, like what is, what does God want me to be doing with with my time? Mm-hmm. Um, and then it, you know, you could you could say, are you treating it as an idol? And you know, just 
when you when you stop and think about everything, and again, mm -hmm. it can be, make us very uncomfortable because we realize we're, we're probably missing the mark of what God of how God wants us to be living. But you know, if Jesus is Lord, He has something to say about everything. Yeah, yeah, and um, and not just the kind of like the negative, like the don't do these things, but then also yeah, also the positive, like this is what you are you know called mm -hmm. to do too. Yeah. Um, Absolutely, yeah. Next question is, what does it mean that I confess that I belong to Christ? We talk about that. I would say, in some form or fashion, mm -hmm. every week. Maybe not in those exact words, mm -hmm. but what, is it, what does it mean to belong to Christ? You know, I, I think that, that uh, I feel like in today's world, it's kind of a loaded, it's kind of like loaded language a little bit, just like that I would belong to, that I would be his, something like that. I don't know if that, um, maybe for some people, if that kind of like raises an eyebrow. For whatever reason, when I hear that language, it is, I don't know if there's anything else that is like more comforting for me mm -hmm. or like more powerful. Like I just love that line from the explanation of the second article. You know, that I may be his own. I, like, get goosebumps saying that and thinking about it. And I, I can't exactly explain why with my words, but it is so powerful to think that, like, yeah, like, I belong to Christ. I think that's a, I mean, for me, it's also just a reinforcement of my baptismal mm -hmm. identity. Um, it's wonderful. I, there, there, I just, I'm just going on wild tangents here, I guess, but there's a, a hymn... It's in our hymnal, and it was actually written by St. Patrick. Uh, it's called, I Bind Unto Myself Today. And then it goes on, the strong name of the Trinity. And like it's just it's this like baptismal remembrance hymn. And I love it. And I just feel like it's, it's reinforcing, like, this is my identity. Like, I belong to, you know, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Like, that's, that's who I am. That's, what I, that's how I want to describe myself. That's, what, that's how God describes me. Yeah, um, and there's I mean there's just all kinds of applications for that I think that that are very powerful for me personally so yeah this is like my jam you know this this <laughs> <laughs> this type of thing I, so I don't know <laughs> yeah yeah and I just think about this is more so like when I was in like middle of high school but you know the import like the extreme importance of belonging to a group of friends like man I you know, there was a few, there were a few years that in middle school, I just simply didn't have friends, and it like, like life was miserable that during then, you know, and just having people that you that you you belong to this group of friends, you you are part of it, you know, and mm -hmm. a little bit different belonging to Christ, you know, we wouldn't say it's quite the same as belonging to a group of friends, but still that that sense of like you're you're wanted, mm -hmm. you're a part of this, like you're not alone. Um, you know, I think as adults, maybe, you know, maybe it's not quite as important to us to, to belong to that group of friends like how we were when we were young, but uh, I do think that that is still, might look different now, but, mm -hmm. you know, belonging is still, yeah, it still is important, and yeah, to, to belong to the maker of mm -hmm. everything. Yeah. Is, yeah, I, I think it is a, I, I think it is a, basic human need, yeah, like you're saying, kind of take maybe, maybe a different shape when you're 7 or 12 as it does when you're like 42 or something, but um, it, it is important, yeah. And I think I think we do, I guess, yeah, the, the more I think about it, we, we do, you know, that belonging, kind of when, when it's like more of a reciprocal thing, it's like we belong to each other. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, like, like, uh, my mind always goes to sports, you know, but like a sports team that it has great success, you know, like end up like winning the championship or something. You'll hear that in post game interviews after they've held the trophy up. Like, yeah. You know, we, we like wanted this for each other. You know, we belong to each other. We were all in this together all this kind of language. Like, oh yeah, it, it is powerful. Um, and I think, you know, there's, there's been... You know, people will talk sometimes about. And there's some quote I can't remember who said it. It's probably somebody really awesome that said it. But it's like we all belong to Christ, 
And it's like, it's like, you know, we have Christ, but then we also have each other. We belong to each other. It's like everyone who's in the body of Christ belongs to Jesus and belongs to one another, too. Yeah. Um, it just cements our identity in Christ and, and together and um, creates something that wasn't there, I guess, with without Christ. Yeah. We would be more individualistic and separate and... You know, I don't know, more cutthroat or something, I guess, but with each other. Yeah. Yeah, that's one of the ways I think, you know, Christ is restoring what what things were like before the fall. The the mm. community, you know, that was the sense of, of, of a community of togetherness was shattered in the fall. And mm-hmm. you know, I know we've talked about in this Bible study before how Christ is working to uh he began it on earth when he was you know, in his, doing his ministry, and then we we see glimpses of it, and those glimpses are just uh, a foretaste of what's to come. But this is this is a glimpse of of what the community of, of God's people is supposed to be like, you know. Um, so, yeah, just a, a glimpse, a foretaste of, of what's to come, where it's going to be perfect mm. community uh, for all of eternity. Yeah. Next question is about God's kingdom. Mm. I thought this was the creed, but this is kind of a little bit of Lord's Prayer, right? The God's kingdom. What is uh, what is God's kingdom? First of all, and, and what does it mean that we? What does it mean for us that we live under it? Mm. Yeah, you know, I mean, the kingdom is. You know, you read the Gospels and it's like everywhere. Jesus, it's like the thing that Jesus talks about the most is the kingdom. The kingdom is coming. Whether it's the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven, uh, I think they mean the same thing. But yeah, it's it's wherever, the way that I've always been taught, and it makes so much sense to me, is like God's kingdom is wherever, wherever he is reigning as king. Mm -hmm. And how does God reign as king? Well, he does that through Jesus. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Um, So, you know, his kingdom was coming was here in you know 2000 years ago wherever Jesus was and and now it's it's wherever it's still wherever Jesus is you know wherever Jesus word I mean with, the, with to use more like churchy language it's like you know wherever uh, the word is being preached wherever like the sacraments you know wherever people are being baptized wherever the lord's supper is being handed out for the forgiveness of sins it's yeah it's wherever that gracious activity of Christ is is going on um, that all sounds nice and and wonderful but then I think I always think about well it's it's also you know the kingdom is where you know it's like where um, I might be crying about something and you're like listening to me <laughs> or you know putting your hand on my shoulder and offering me a word of comfort you know stuff like that like that's that's also like the kingdom of Christ is is uh, reigning in those like small, unseen, insignificant moments, just where like you know the, the hope and trust in Christ are reigning supreme. I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, actually, I'm kind of drawing a blank right now. I, one of the things that you know, like Luther talks about is are these different kingdoms. I don't know if this is. I'm like derailing us possibly, but kingdom you know, is is that is that usually in the creed in here, or is that does power, he talk about that in the Lord's and, prayer? Power, glory, and um, and grace. Grace. Yeah, that's Lord's prayer. That's Lord's prayer. Okay. Or no, forget that I even said no. That because I that is a, that is well, a, I was kind of paging through here and I didn't see it. Yeah. Because I know, like when I when I have when I teach confirmation and stuff, like I usually teach about this. Well, it's like prophet, priest, and king. Yeah, we're, we're going off the rails here. You guys maybe are like, oh, yeah, I remember this. Talking about Jesus. He's the king. And then they talk about these. Because um, we're, we're using, like, a general kingdom language. But then there's also um, times where you might talk about different realms, I guess, so to speak, where Jesus is king. Mm-hmm. One being, like, basically all of creation that Jesus rules over. We call it the kingdom of power. And then the kingdom of grace is the church. So it's like, you know, the holy Christian church on earth. And then the kingdom of glory is like all of God's people who have died and now are with him. Um, 
So it's like Jesus is the king of a lot of things. There's like some overlap in these, mm -hmm. in these things. But yeah, I was like paging through and I didn't, I didn't see it there. <laughs> so I don't know, I don't know where it is. Maybe I just missed it. But, yeah, but no, it is, it is the uh, the creed. Yeah, yeah. But this, these are just you know. I think as we reflect upon, I I overuse this verse probably, but you know Jesus has um, all authority in heaven and on earth given to him. So you're like, well, this guy's in charge of everything. So I think it's just we're brainstorming like, well, he he's in charge of all of creation. You know, people that confess him as Lord and Savior, and also those who don't. You know, it's like, oh man, there's a lot of people who don't know that Jesus is their King, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but he is. And then also he's reigning in the church, and then he's also reigning in you know the, all people who are with him now, the saints. You know, we would say, and uh, yeah, just all all things have been entrusted to him by by his Father. So you can't. You can't get away from Jesus' kingdom. No. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I've, I've like stream of consciousness us away from probably where you were going to go. No, that's, that's totally <laughs> fine. I was, I was going to say though, like, you know, I, I think that in my mind, the easiest kingdom to think about or empire or whatever is the Roman Empire. I think, you know, like they, mm -hmm. they had a pretty, pretty good reign for a while. And just think about like the protection that you had as a Roman citizen. You know, Paul uses that like, you know, he he uses the Roman citizen card to get out of uh, some beatings and you know to have a fairer trial. Mm -hmm. And you know, like if you were a Roman citizen, like you were protected. And you know, we are citizens of the kingdom of heaven, and we have protection from going back to a few questions ago from the worst of enemies, sin, death, and the devil. And uh, just what uh, what a great kingdom that is to be in. And one that you don't have to pay taxes or, you know, answer to a, an, you know, an unrighteous or an unfair dictator, you know, like this is unlike any other kingdom in, in a lot of ways, but yet you still have you have the best of the best kingdoms, mm -hmm. but not the worst, mm -hmm. you know? Like, it's the best of, of what a kingdom could possibly be, mm. so. Yeah, and, and just, yeah, you, you know that you, you will get justice mm -hmm. under this king. Um, and, you know, we can, pastors like to play around with that, you know, like, God's justice, because, you know, technically, God's justice would be executed on us, like, by destroying us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but we get the justice because the king himself um, took the, the punishment for us. Mm -hmm. so, so yeah, so it's like we we don't have to worry now that there's going to be a day in the future when they're going to change their minds or there's going to be someone else in charge and they're going to cha you know, change what the verdict is or mm -hmm. something. Yeah, we can rest that, that that's all they're taken care of. Yeah, and like you said, it's just this gracious kingdom. Mm -hmm. So the next question talks about serving God, uh, serving Jesus in everlasting righteousness, innocence, and blessedness. So, um, I'll, I'll ask a question that it may or may not be how this is going, but are we going to have to work in eternity? I hope so. I'm going to be bored. If I <laughs> <laughs> but is it work a bad thing? Uh, well, it depends. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I think, I, I, you know, it's it's like anything, right? I, well, I mean, I, I don't, you have to go back to the Garden of Eden. Um, Adam and Eve have work to do. They're they're tending the garden. They're taking care of all the animals. You know, we don't know exactly what that entails, but they're like stewards of, of all that God has created. Um, and then it, in in my reading of it, it only becomes attached to negativity once sin enters the world. Yeah. You know, I mean, like, obviously the big one, uh, we read it yesterday and at the noon service, you know, it's like, oh, yeah, you got to go work the field, but it's going to, I mean, you're going to have to, through your blood, sweat, and tears, get some corn or some grain or some fruit to come out of this ground. You know, I mean, it's, yeah. it's going to be, you know, some years there's going to be famine and pestilence and, you know, despite your best efforts and, you know, you're, you're just going to, have to work yourself to the bone to 
to get this ground to yield. Whereas before it was just kind of, oop, here, wow, we've got another bumper crop <laughs> again today, you know. Um, but yeah, I think, I think work, you know, a lot of people, I don't know, anecdotally, it seems like most people tend to complain more about their work than they, than they say that they like it. Um, but yeah, but I think getting back to your question though, it, it does, it does seem like there, I don't think we're going to have, you know, think about heaven. I think about the eternal life. A lot of the jobs that are needed today aren't going to be, yeah. you know, I mean, think about like here. We're going to be out of a job. Well, we're going to be out of a job. Exactly. I know. I don't really have a backup plan, so I'm kind of concerned by that. But, um, but like, think about like, uh, you know, the, some of the biggest employers in our area, like healthcare. We're not going to need, you know, I hate to say, you're not going to need like Cleveland Clinic, University Hospital. <laughs> you know, you're going to have to, we're going to have to all learn new skills. Yeah. <laughs> like Jesus is going to be the pastor and <laughs> we're going to be demoted to something way less. But um, yeah, so I don't, I don't know exactly what that's going to look like. Um, but I think there, there is going to be some level of, you know, work. We don't have like a, a term, I guess, to not. To, to use other than work, but service, yeah. There's going to be some, some role there. Yeah, it's not just going to be. It's hard to understand. Like, it's not just going to be like a, like a vacation, all the time, or it's not just going to be like, well, got nothing better to do. I'm just gonna, you know, watch Netflix all day. <laughs> yeah, uh, and it's tough because, like <laughs> I, like I, you know, mentioned in my sermon yesterday, we have so little to go off of. Mm-hmm. In of, of what it was like before there was sin, like you know, the show was just getting started. We were just getting to know the characters and the setting, and then mm-hmm. everything changed completely. And so, like, we just don't have a point of reference to know yeah. this is what it's going to be like. But something I will say too is, you know, a lot of people do complain about work, but you know, two things I would say is one, you know, what's your attitude like? Are you are you doing it just? to get a job or are you seeing it as something that you're glorifying God through and are, mm-hmm. you know, serving others and two you know, maybe if you hate your job maybe you, you should look for a different one because you know like I think I'm going to guess that there have been times in everybody's life where they have like really enjoyed their job and mm-hmm. you know if not I'm, I'm sorry um, but you know I think like work is not a bad thing. Like when we, mm-hmm. when we, when that purpose that God has for us aligns with our passion, you yeah. know, doing something we enjoy, mm-hmm. I, work can be a beautiful thing. And it's, you know, work has a lot of bad connotations with it. I think, but, mm-hmm. but when those, when that cross section of God's purpose and yeah. our enjoyment and and our gifts and abilities line up, mm-hmm. it is a great thing. And you know, yeah, you see. Yeah fruit that serves others and you know mm-hmm. it's you you're excited to go do your job and and stuff like that and so um yeah kind of two different directions thinking about eternity and mm-hmm. thinking about now but i think they yeah. very closely tie together mm-hmm. well i think that's you know yeah work is inherently good it's it's a good thing service work whatever however you want to say it it's like you've alluded to it it's the other factors of the sinful world that combine that maybe do like take away the the joy or or just like yeah you know you never you never for for a variety of reasons you might never find quite your niche and some we could we could talk about this for a whole hour if we wanted to but um i think that that's what everyone is looking forward to again about eternity is i will be in perfect sync and communion with like with God and he'll be you know, whatever it's going to look like in eternity he's going to be like utilizing me in his service like in the exact right way mm-hmm. I think that's it happens to definitely a minority of people in this life where we're like oh this is the perfect spot for me to be in and if it does happen it like is short lived because something else goes wrong yeah <laughs> you know yeah it's, yeah, it's uh, like uh, for those of you football fans there's a, a player named Cordero Patterson he was a very <laughs> very athletic player but he bounced around he was on like six different teams nobody could learn how to use him and then he went to the Atlanta Falcons and they figured out how to use him 
and he had success. Mm -hmm. And it was like he was put in the right situation with his abilities that he had, and and there was a fruit that was yielded, you know. And God has there are situations for us that you know it just it does line up like that. It's just sometimes we're not in those right situations, mm -hmm. and you know just. Got to get with the right team. Um. <laughs> yeah, I, folks, I am. I don't know what the odds were that Cordero Patterson was going to be uh, referenced in today's Bible study, but I, it was they were Love. long odds. Love. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but here we are. <laughs> um, I'll move us along from this one. <laughs> Um, he played for the Falcons, you yeah. know, as for Josh's favorite team. Which, yeah. <laughs> um, so this kingdom of God sounds pretty great. How how do we know that we're a part of it? Like, where does that confidence come from? I mean, I just can't imagine that, you know, I'm so great that I'm sure God just drafted me into it. You know? Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> um, how do we know that we're a part of it? Do, I, do you want me to talk about predestination, or am I am I going too crazy? I, I wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> I will leave it to where you want to go with it. No, I mean, I mean, yeah. It's. I think the 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 one answer is just Jesus, but uh, I think you know one of the the reasons for you know, the reason for confidence, I think, or knowing that we're that we're in the kingdom is that you know the work, the completed work of Jesus, mm -hmm. you know. You said yesterday, it is finished. Um, it says that on the cross, and then it's like, then you see it. You see the reality then as he walks out of the, the grave, you know. Mm -hmm. I kind of feel like this is not biblical, but I, I kind of feel like Jesus, you know, kind of walks out of the grave. No one's around. He's like, okay, now it's really finished. And he kind of <laughs> like walks off and goes and hides and waits for Mary Magdalene to, you know. No. <laughs> this is this is like fan fan fiction. Yeah. This is uh what's the word? Um non non canonical. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this this yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and you know, just thinking about God's kingdom being where God rules and reigns, you know, uh in the in the hearts of believers and, you know, I just think tying it back to um Back to the sacraments, too, you know, that uh, God gave us the sacraments because he knew that we are fickle humans who needed to be reminded mm. of, of his love and grace towards us, um, you know, and, and that's why he gave us these, these things that we can, we can touch, we can, we can feel, we can see, taste, smell, you know, we can perceive with our senses Mm -hmm. And it's, it's a physical reminder, yeah. kind of like the scars of Jesus were a physical reminder for mm -hmm. Thomas, yeah. um, just of, of, of our standing in the kingdom of God, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and so, yeah, it's short answer, though, it is Jesus, and it yeah. has nothing to do with us. Mm -hmm. um, like, like you were joking about it, it's not <laughs> that we are that? such a... <laughs> 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 You're just trying to derail me now. <laughs> um, it's not that we're, you know, such a great citizen. Um, yeah, we're not. We, we, we were pretty crummy citizens. We needed to be taught how to be good citizens. Mm -hmm. You know, following after Jesus. Mm -hmm. um, it's only by the work of Jesus that we are uh, in His mm -hmm. kingdom. Yeah. So. Well, yeah, I think you know, I. I was these two words secure and insecure were kind of bouncing around in my head. Sometimes I think ultimately like, yeah, we want to be secure in our faith in Christ. But then sometimes I think like, Oh, you know, we'll use the term sometimes like, Oh, this person is secure in their sin. Mm. It's like, I'm, I'm kind of uh, willingly sinning and I feel like secure or just kind of, kind of like defiant a little bit toward God. And so then I have to hear the law, I have to confess my sins to then be like, oh no, I, now I feel kind of insecure mm -hmm. that I have failed and I, I, I'm i not worthy of being in the kingdom. And that's where, like you're saying, like these these reminders, the absolution that we hear, the, the Lord's Supper, you know, remind, remembering my baptism, um, 
you know, seeing the risen Jesus with the scars and everything, it's like, okay, then it, it makes me, you know, secure again. But, but yeah, I, I do. I mean, I get, I get insecure. Yeah. As a, as a Christian, because I am made aware again and again of the enormity of my sin. And, you know, I know the things that I think that no one else hears, you know, and I'm like, oh, this is like the type of person that I am. Um, and I need the grace of God. <laughs> I need to be reminded of that every single day. Um, so yeah, I, I think we can never. This is going to kind of sound, sound kind of it's kind of a tangent, but I was thinking the other day. I was like, yeah, when I, because I think we all have maybe certain Bible passages that bring us a lot of comfort and security in Christ, not security in ourselves, but in Christ. And I was thinking, yeah, I, I want to have like a list of, you know, like like if I'm on my deathbed, hmm. what do I want my my pastor or my family like to just be reading to me from the Bible, you know, like, oh yeah, you know, play me the hits again, you know, play, play me some Romans 8, you know, yeah. play, play me some Psalm 20. That was on my list. <laughs> but yeah, you know, um, play me some, you know, John 11, 25 and 26, you know, just, um, those are, you can never hear those things enough, I mm -hmm. think, to, to just reinforce, <clears throat> oh, it's all Jesus, That that's what, you know, I, I'm his own, I'm going to live under him and in his kingdom forever. Yeah. Yeah, kind of going off of something you said earlier, um, it was interesting. Last night at in small, in my small group, we were talking about just how, uh, you know, talking about the forgiveness, the, the living free, and mm -hmm. um, how sometimes, as especially as people who are lifelong Christians, you know, we, we fixate, our minds might fixate more on the thing that we say almost every week, I poor miserable sinner mm -hmm. and it's a it's a balance of you know confessing our sins being honest with God for our sins but also receiving that forgiveness right mm -hmm. like you know it, it it is important to understand both but what gets the final word you know and mm -hmm. that you know that's kind of what this forgiving challenge is one of the main focuses but um yeah that security uh we need to be reminded of it, you know, for as much as we need to be reminded that we're sinful and that mm -hmm. we need forgiveness, we need to be reminded and, you know, thank God for, for his body and blood that mm -hmm. are that very real reminder of, you know, even if you don't feel forgiven, here's the proof that you are. Yeah. Take and, uh -huh. take and drink. Yeah. And, you know, because emotion, I, I forget who the quote is from, but emotions can make terrible masters, mm -hmm. you know, and we yeah. all have emotions and yeah. we can all feel a certain way about our failures, mm -hmm. but at the end of the day, take and eat, take a drink, yeah. you're forgiven. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think, and that's what, you know, as we're getting into the forgiving challenge, I think that that goes into part of this, it. like, I, I have trouble forgiving myself or I just, it's like, well, I know factually that like Jesus died for my sins but then but I don't feel that way exactly. and so like you, I think it's exploring well why don't I feel that way because if I if I don't I mean it might just be I'm just I'm allowing Satan to just beat me up over my sins or it might be just some kind of a blockage where um we are I guess doubting doubting God's grace at least for me because mm -hmm. I think we do that that's like the you know one of the points is I can like, I would say something different to you. Like, you, you and I could do the same sin. I'd be like, oh, you know, Pastor, you're forgiven. But then, like, I would drive home and feel like, oh, I don't know about me, though. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, just for, for whatever reason. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, those yeah those emotions can be, like, I mean, yeah, we know it. Like, it matters what God says, what God thinks about us. But it, it can cause a lot of inner turmoil and doubt, and Satan can feed on that. So, mm -hmm. that's what we're, yeah, that's what we're hoping hoping and praying that through this challenge and through the study of God's word and all of its forms that he will just strengthen and deepen that reliance on, on Jesus. That's what Lent is all about. Yeah. Um, Wait, so it's not just about making you feel bad? Um, that's definitely like 98%. No, <laughs> that, that's Ash Wednesday is really a feel kind of the feel bad day. Ash Wednesday and Good Friday. Yeah. Um, like, I wouldn't say that's the purpose, but if you mm -hmm. don't walk away feeling a little bit bad, I think yeah. something was missed. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, um, 
while, while we're kind of here on the edge of diving into the forgiving challenge, we in the, the day two's reading, um, Pastor Zenderer talks about this conversation that he had with this man who had been going to his church for a few months and like he was going to leave the church because of the practice of confessing your sins just made him feel so guilty and shameful, I guess. And Zender says, if you walk away from confessing with from confession focusing more on your brokenness than on like the kindness and grace of God, then something didn't go right. And I I like almost dropped the book on it because I was just like, it's such a powerful thing. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, it, that's not that's not why we joke sometimes like Catholic Lutheran guilt or whatever. Um, and that's a thing that the the Holy Spirit does bring us to repentance, but that should not be the final thing. I think it's it's just worth more exploring. Um, you know, yeah, it should be that confessing, like it wraps up with absolution, right? We're always to be directed. The final word is God's love and His grace, His forgiveness for us in Christ. Um, but yeah, that's what we're going to be talking about in much more depth. Yeah. So, um, I do feel a little bit bad uh, that we're we're making the Holy Spirit wait. He's used for to the this. third article. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> but um, but I'm looking forward to next week and beyond uh, talking about the forgiving challenge here on this mm-hmm. study. Yeah. And so so we'll be. Uh, you know, we'll be kind of sharing our own reactions and reflections from the, the week's readings, and we'd love to hear from from you guys too. What you're, uh, what you're learning, and what you're, yeah, just what God is teaching you through this forgiving challenge. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, just a reminder: if you've not uh, gotten your book, it's not too late. We still, excuse me, we still have books. We do. Um, you know, you, it won't take too long to catch up. Uh, again, if you were not. Uh, in a small group last night, there's always still room. So we'd love to have you be a part of that. Uh, we, as we've said, this we really believe that uh, this can be a, a life-changing challenge, and we want every everybody here at St. Paul and beyond St. Paul even to, to join us as we go through this. So uh, pray that you join us and uh, hope to see you in worship as we continue talking about. Well, should we tell them what we're going to be talking about this Sunday? Pastor Bieber is going to come back. Pastor Bieber, we don't I mean, want to scare him away. He's talking about sin. Yeah. Uh, you know, so. It's ugly, but it all starts with sin. You need to, it all starts with sin, yeah. yeah you need to yeah. understand that. And once we get past the sin, not past it, but once we understand the sin, mm-hmm. how much greater that forgiveness is. Mm. Yeah. Thank you for joining us, guys. Blessings on the rest of your day.